transmission Beaming from the mountain top Using horror ammunition With extreme prejudice I'm not going to go through all the features as this radio could do. They're pretty much standard like any any other radio. But I'm just going to highlight the uh, the ones that, that are uh, attractive to me uh, and what I look for. Power options. You have a, a base charger here. And this one here is connected to... Uh, you can use a wall plug that comes with it. Just plug it in and as simple as that just like any other charger uh, the cool thing about this is it's uh, adaptable so I take this little phono plug off from the wall unit and with the uh, box it comes with a car charger so you could plug this in the same base here so let's say you're on a road, you want to charge up real quick, it's on batteries now as far as the car battery through the charger to the base. And that's pretty good, good adaptability. There's another thing that they sell called a, a battery eliminator. This is the same makeup as, as uh, your lithium ion battery. But the guts were, were taken out and there's some circuitry inside a uh, regulator, voltage regulator, that takes 12 volts and 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 uh, regulates it to to 8 volts or 7.5 volts, and you can use this in the pla in the place of a battery. Hook this up to your car accessory port, and you're ready to rock. Uh, a cool thing about it is you're able to transmit your full 5 watts of high power, whereas the Yaesu uh, 750. Uh, Yaesu 7 here, VX7, through the car accessory port, you could only transmit, uh, I think, half a watt or one watt because their charger or, or uh, cable assembly here cannot sync that much uh, current through their circuitry to, to make this thing work at full power. But this guy can, and that's pretty good. Uh, I got this from another vendor because... Uh, uh, I couldn't find it with with the current vendor that I, that I that I have, and one thing that that <laughs> this is this being Chinese made, these two brass bushings here were assembled here, and on the other side inside the uh, the circuitry here, that's where the connections to to the to the to these part to to this two plugs are and there's no protection there so it started shortening it out so me being a geek I opened it up and, and discovered that so uh, you could take a little screwdriver and it's not secured in any way it's just uh, just it's just the metal you could just pop those out and, and that'll save you some grief later on um, I have another one and it didn't have a problem but I, I, I plan on taking these two things out it's not needed uh, so that's a warning So far, they don't make a double A or triple A kind of emergency backup as far as a battery option. Some models uh, from other makers, they, they do have double A uh, carriers here that you can put in the back of the radio. Uh, the only thing that remotely resembles some sort of battery backup would be the battery eliminator which is what I have here. I plan to uh, possibly modify this BK pack here, make a cable to it and sort of like uh, make an adapter into this so uh, I could power it with, with this battery pack if I need to. That's a future project. I got two of these so I could do that. One I could use as a strictly car uh, port sort of uh, back up and the other one I'm just gonna hack up and, and modify it to to my to my liking okay for you volunteers and public safety agencies this radio here is capable of doing narrowband so it conforms with the 2012 or I think 2013 uh, federal mandate to convert all uh, radios to narrowband the 
part 90 radios. Uh, part 87, 97 and part 95 are not affected. But this radio here is capable of, of switching over. So you have uh, compatibility. Not only that, uh, you got to be careful with these Chinese companies because they are, do not know or they're not in a culture of, of communications. It's a, it's a, it was a communist state or it still is a communist state. So they don't really allow their people to communicate freely. So they kind of had to learn how we do business here in the United States. So there's a lot of features that, that they're always upgrading on these radios because uh, they're like, oh, you guys do that? Oh, you guys do this? And they're just not used to that culture in communications. Uh, they weren't they weren't as free as we were. So they're they're catching up to to how we do business in the United States as far as communications. Now with the narrow band capabilities, you could fit more frequencies into a given spectrum. So for uh, interoperability. Uh, you could uh, input frequencies onto this that would conform to that. Uh, for instance, uh, VTAC 11. VTAC 11 is uh, interoperability channels for for incidents and major disasters and whatnot, what have you, available uh, nationwide, and it's 151.1375. On the older wideband radios, they were not capable of, of going to that to that resolution there, but on this one you can. So it's uh, one, five, one, one, three, seven. And when I put the seven, it automatically gave me the uh, half channel space there of point five uh, of five kHz there. Three, two, one. So I could go deeper in, in, into, into uh, frequencies as far as uh, half channels. This radio is capable of doing that. And Cato Communications, they just got a shipment of upgraded radios that added that particular feature on there. Before it wouldn't go that down into resolution, I guess in their, in their previous versions. But in this version here, you have that capabilities and that was a plus at least for me because I use some of these interoperability channels when when I'm assigned to an incident and and very valuable if, if, if you're a volunteer or public safety agencies and stuff like that amateurs not as much but I guess you guys could use uh, narrow band on, on amateur uh, frequencies I'm not sure the rules uh, pertaining to that but that's what it is now I'm going to test a narrow band feature of this. Uh, this is primarily for the government agencies and businesses which they are required to change over in 2012. Uh, civilians, uh, it may not affect you guys at all, but it's there. But I'm not going to go into it. So for narrow band bandwidth, the deviation should read half a full deviation on a, f on a wide band. Uh, mode. So here we go. Five, four, two point five deviation. Narrow band is is within spec. Let me see. Point twenty nine. Point twenty nine deviation. And now I'm going to transmit DTMF tones. Those are the those uh, phone sounding digits that you hear. So here we go. And if you notice over here, the decoded messages will come out. So contrary to uh, what the vendor says that, that it's uh, weird kind of doing the uh, A, B, C, D digits, uh, it's able to do that. So here I'm going to demonstrate. A, B, C, D, 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Asterisk, zero, pound. So it's able to transmit that. And the deviation for the tone is 
two kHz of deviation. So that's pretty good. Five, four, three, two, one. Not bad for a hundred bucks. Everything I've shown you so far is a hundred bucks. I mean, unbelievable. Okay, guys, I'm going to demonstrate why I need the DTMF function on this uh, radio here. So, make pretend I'm stuck behind a snow storm, no communications, or fire, forest fire. I'm behind lines. I'm going to transmit into a radio inside this uh, particular vault. It belongs to law enforcement. And they have an auto patch, a phone auto patch, or one that I set up for them. So the only access I have is my radio here. So I'm going to go ahead and call my cell number here. And uh, I have a four digit number that, that would automatically call my real phone number. So I could use it as a security thing. Just dial those four numbers. Yeah. There it is. And I'm going to transmit into it. Five, four, three, two, one. And the other person on the other side. Five, four, three, two, one. And there I have uh, a Ma Bell telephone number auto patched through the radio. That's why DTMF is important for me. There are some um, amateur stations out there that have this set up. And uh, law enforcement or public safety radio systems, uh, some of them do. And this particular machine here that's inside this vault, uh, I configured it that way even though it, I wasn't told to. But uh, it's a, it, I think it's a valuable safety item for me and, and some of the crews that I work with. So I put it on there.